Hey everybody, Reef Girl here. This is one of four gorgeous barnacles that I got from Reef Cleaners. And I was racking my brains trying to figure out what I could do that might be unique with the largest of them. I came up with an idea and I'm going to show you how I got from taking this barnacle to the end product. So the first thing I noticed is this thing tips over really easily and for what I wanted to do I wanted it to stand up straight. So I'm going to make a base for it using this this Epo putty. So I'm not going to make you sit there and watch me mix it all and all that kind of thing. I'm just going to kind of show you the highlights of creating a hard base for this so that it will sit upright in the sand. After working with it for a while, I did manage to create something that would allow it to sit up and flat. It took a lot longer than I expected, but eventually I reached a point where I was satisfied that it was not going to tip over readily, so I set it upside down to cure overnight. Here I've got some eMarco 400 mortar. This is left over from when I created my aquascape. I was talking to Michael Caputo at the Greater Niagara Coral Show. He has chaotic aquatics. And I asked if he thought it might be a good idea to do what I was planning to do with this barnacle. And he pointed out the last thing I wanted would be to have stagnant water inside the cavities. And he was 100% right. I hadn't even thought of that. So I decided I would mix this stuff up so that it was runny and use a pipette to put it inside the cavities. I figured this would be really easy. Yeah, no, that was wrong. It turned out it did not work very well. I had to mix the mortar so it was runny enough to go up the pipette, but the problem with that was that it required constant stirring, and pretty soon I had a big mess on my hands. Not only that, the mortar was not going where I needed it to go. So I abandoned the pipette and started working with a spoon. This was much easier and made a different kind of mess, but one that I knew that I'd be able to clean up later, and I was actually able to fill the cavities I needed to fill with as much mortar as I needed to put in. I left the mortar to cure for several days, and eventually it turned pure white and rock hard. Now I was faced with cleanup because these edges were very, very ragged, and for what I wanted to do, some of these openings would need to be enlarged a little bit. Safety first, got the safety glasses, and also a mask, because there is going to be dust. I'm going through and I'm testing each piece that I want to put in the barnacle to see how much I need to change the holes. So I'm gonna keep the rest of that a secret until the end. But for now, I'm ready to go through and work on each hole to clean it up and make it the right size. Smells like a dentist. Throughout this process, each time I got one section cleaned up, I would check and see how the piece I wanted to put in there would fit and make any adjustments that I had to make. Dust in there. And we're ready for the next phase. It's all cleaned up and good to go. I'm using the heat pack trick to keep the water in this container warm. And I've moved the entire frag rack into here because that'll be the easiest way to handle these things. So I have to work fast. I got my barnacle right here. My plan here is to start at the bottom and work my way up. And that way, if things don't go as planned and take longer than I think, I'll be able to submerge whatever's in there underwater so that it doesn't dry out. Over the course of the next hour, yes, it took an hour, I ran out of putty twice, had to make more, and then ran out of putty almost at the end. I found a little bit more stashed away in my fish room, and so then I decided I needed to fill up some of these cavities a little bit more than I had with the cement. So I got some pebbles of pond matrix out of the tank and I just dropped them in here where I thought they could take up some space. Not an ideal solution because this meant there would be pockets of either water or air inside here. But at this point, this had been going on for a very long time and I really wanted to finish it. You can probably see there that this entire thing is submerged underwater. I had to do that because I was becoming concerned about the length of time some of these corals had been out of the water. 
Because this had been submerged, of course the cavities were full of water, so I had to dump that out. And now it was time to get started putting the rest of the corals in. I'm putting glue on the underside of the frag disc, and I'm going to wrap a sausage of putty around to cover that glue. And the idea here is to get the putty wrapped around the stem of the frag plug so that when I push it into the cavity, it will squeeze down and up at the same time. And I'll be able to firmly fix the frag plug in place. I did this with all of them and I'm just showing you this one as an example. And this worked really well. So here's the finished product. During the whole process, which took about 25 more minutes, I frequently dripped water using a pipette on the corals that were already installed. So I'm going to leave it resting in this water for a little while to allow the putty and the glue to cure a bit before I put it in the tank. All right, here we go. The moment of truth. might be way too big for that spot. In fact, I think I'm going to dig it down in the sand a little bit. The polyps are opening a lot faster than I thought, given how long they were out of the water while they were being put in here, and secondly, how cold the water was in the bowl that I had them in. So that's really promising, actually. You can see there that I've left two of the large cavities open because I'm thinking, who knows, maybe the Midas Blenny would enjoy making his home in one of them. I just hope everything survives and starts to grow and if that happens I think this is going to look really cool in a couple of months from now. Mm -hmm.